Come in, Madame Richter. Colonel Mart, how did you know? A simple device that I learned from you, my old fortune-telling friend. A well-placed mirror above the transom. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> how are you, Madame? Do sit down. And uh, how is the spirit trade? Colonel, I hardly know how to tell you. Don't tell me. Let me try my technique before the master. People only go to a fortune teller for one of two reasons. Hope or fear. Quite right, Colonel. Now then. My crystal ball tells me that you have come out of fear. But what kind of fear? In your case, it can hardly have to do with financial matters. How do you know? You've just acquired a rich client, a Mrs. Fortescue. Last time I saw the old lady, she was loud in her praises of your occult powers. In the balance of the trade, madame, she is an ideal sucker. I don't know. Maybe I am the sucker. You? Oh, something devilish is going on. That's why I'm here. I don't know what is going on anymore. I'm frightened, Colonel March. Don't tell me that you're becoming afraid of your own fakery. I know it sounds mad, but please hear me out. About nine months ago, Mrs. Fortescue first sent for me. She wanted to communicate with her older son, who had just died. Uh, let me see. Uh, that would be Henry Fortescue, yes? Did you know him? Only slightly. Died in Canada, didn't he? Yes, that's right. Some sort of a hunting accident. Well, for months now, everything has been going along smoothly as usual. Until last night... Lo and behold, the spirit of Henry Fortescue that you've been faking so beautifully suddenly became real. But he can't be real. The room is locked, sealed. I know I have to for my illusion. It is impossible for any human being to enter that room. And yet, he not only appeared, he spoke. And what did he say? He told his mother to invite other people to my seance tonight. He said he wanted to see the girl he loved, Victoria Hibbing. Old Hibbing's daughter. Did he invite his lordship too? Yes. Also Henry's brother, Terry. Ah. And was that the extent of the ghostly invitation list? Yes, except for Miss Dunn, Mrs. Fossesu's nurse. Colonel, in my profession, I cannot afford to take chances. I would like you to see the seance room. Would you go with me to Mrs. Fossesu's house right away, please? With the greatest of pleasure. Most intriguing. A spiritualist who believes in spirits. Well, there may be hope for the rest of us. Come along. <laughs> Will you tell Mrs. Fortescue Colonel March wishes to see her, please? I assume the ballroom gives you more space in which to work. Yes, more impressive, more echo. Also never used now. All the usual material, Colonel. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've seen this before. They write their questions on the vellum, with the quill. I get my carbon copies from underneath. Uh, I know the variation where the copies are hidden in the drawer, but, but I agree with you, the desk set is much cleverer. The distraction is this, you see. They burn the vellum before I see it by the flame of the oil of joy, drop it into the mystic brazier. I empty the ashes into the urn and read the questions from the ashes. Oh, a variation of the crystal ball. Exactly. Then, with the white veil, with which I protect the earth from human hands, I fold in the carbon copies. But this is mostly atmosphere. This is the enchanted circle. Then I take the urn and place it here beneath his picture. Then I take the lamp with me over here. After a suitable interval, when the spirit starts to move me, I turn down the flame and start up the smoke. Dry ice in water? Yes. I have the best equipment in the business on this job. Remote control, phonograph, tape recorder, everything. No secret passages, panels, trapdoors? Oh, no. 
When I work alone, I must be absolutely sure I will not be interrupted, even by accident. Of course, the doors are bolted. Triple bolted, top, middle, bottom, solid iron. Now, just where did you materialize Henry Fortescue? I used only voice, really, and a little dry ice illusion beneath his picture. It's an interesting face. I saw it only for a while. There was something strange in the eyes. And where were you when that happened? I was here, turning down the flame. As the room grew darker, Mrs. Fortescue called out to him, Henry, Henry, you may not believe me. I was touched. It was a pitiful voice. She called out again. I turned where she was looking, and there he was, just as in the picture. <laughs> Sorry if I startled you, Madam Richter. Oh, Colonel March, how nice to see you again. How are you, Terry? Well, not so bad. We are getting spooky around here, aren't we? Well, I confess I was a little startled myself. Your resemblance to Henry is extraordinary. Yes, most people used to take us for twins. What a pity you couldn't have been present last night. No, really, Colonel. Has Madame Blavatsky been boring you with her ghost tales? The whole business is embarrassing, if you ask me. Embarrassing? Certainly. The real nobility are born with ghosts in their walls. We have to pay for ours. What a cynic you've become in these matters. Aren't you? Well, perhaps the seance tonight will change your mind. I hear you've been invited. You don't really think I'm going. It's ridiculous. You dare to refuse your brother's invitation? I certainly do. I want no part of it. A short of an engraved invitation issued by the Heavenly Post Office. Which reminds me, Colonel, I was sent to tell you that Mother will see you now if you care to go up. Oh, thank you. Uh, I hope you'll change your mind about attending the seance tonight. I doubt it. I'm so sorry you've been ill, Mrs. Fortescue. If I'd known, I'd have called on you before. The doctors tell me it's not an illness in the real sense of the word. They say it's just that I've lost the will to walk since, since Henry found oh. peace. It's the work of the devil, the whole thing from beginning to end. Miss Dunn, please. It's not peace he found, but the workings of divine retribution and the rewards of evil. It is not too painful a subject, Mrs. Fortescue. What made Henry take himself off to Canada? He didn't. It was my doing. I made him go. I, I forced him to go. On account of Victoria? I thought the engagement was a terrible mistake. There were too many obstacles to a happy marriage. His lordship disapproved. Very much. Victoria may have loved him, but not enough. I was sure of that. Not enough to risk breaking with her family. Uh, so Henry was shipped off to Canada. Well, only for a short time. I never disowned him. I hoped that in time he would forget Victoria. But then he died without writing. I always wondered whether he understood and forgave. Tonight, I shall ask him. I hope his reply will comfort you. How did you hear of Henry's death? The news was brought to me by a Mr. Fenton. A strange man. I, I don't know how Henry happened to meet him in Canada. They were together on a shooting trip. That was when... Yes. Is Fenton living in London? Yes, I think so. I, I've forgotten. Miss Dunn, do you remember the address Mr. Fenton gave us? I do. Number 10, Beacon Lane. N.W. 8. Thank you very much. It was very good of you to see me, Mrs. Fawcett. Colonel March? Yes? Could I have a word with you in private somewhere? Well, of course you can, though. At the moment, I'm a little more interested in the inner man than things spiritual. Well, oh, fine. Well, lunch is on me. My oh. car's outside. Fine. Off to you, sir. We're a pretty rotten lot, if you must know the truth. All very interesting, but... I'm sure you haven't invited me to lunch simply to regale me with gossip about your family. No, I'm sorry. You realize Madame Richter's pure humbug. But my brother's resurrection is not. You think there really is a ghost? The contrary. 
I think Henry is stalking the halls in his dirty stockinged feet. Are you trying to tell me that, that you think that Henry is alive here in London? Yes. And what's more, I never believed he was dead. In spite of Fenton's story? Would you take the unsupported word of a crook when all the circumstances were so strange? All Fenton said was that Henry's clothes were found on the edge of a cliff. Nothing more. The body was never found. Well, assuming that you're right, uh, why should Henry choose this rather theatrical form of homecoming? Exhibitionism, perversity, Henry running true to form. Maybe he's finally cracked. Shouldn't surprise anyone who knew him. Sounds a bit far-fetched to me. I, I can think of much more likely motives. Really? And what, for instance? Well, your mother feels very badly about Henry having been packed off to Canada like that. She'd do anything for him now, or for someone posing as Henry. You mean to get money out of her? Yes. Hmm. She does hang on to it. And what does Victoria think of all this? Vickia? I don't know. I, I suppose she's surprised to find Henry is walking around the place. Have you seen her lately? No, I... <laughs> no, not, not for months. Yeah. Telephone, Colonel March. Thank you. Excuse me. Yes? Oh, yes, yes. I'll be there in ten minutes. I'm sorry to rush off, but the Earl of Hibbing is waiting for me in my office. With Victoria. Oh, uh, uh, are you going to the seance tonight, sir? Should I? <laughs> Do you think I'm more gullible than you are? Well, who knows? It, uh, it might be interesting. Might indeed. Especially if I can persuade you to come with me. I think you forgot your paper. So sorry to have kept you waiting, sir. Victoria? Now, let's omit the usual polite preliminaries, Colonel. I shall come directly to the point. Now, what do you think about this absurd affair tonight? Madame Richter told me that she'd consulted you. Well, I confess I'm puzzled and more than a little worried. Worried? Why? Well, you look worried too, Victoria. But do you think there's any truth to this nonsense? I mean, about Henry's coming back from the dead? Would it make any difference to you if he had? No, I don't think so. My views haven't changed from a year ago. I'm a busy man, Colonel. Do you suggest that I should go there tonight? I should. I assure you there's no danger. Danger? No danger to you either, Victoria. I advise you both to go. But why? Well, you ask my advice. I can't do more than give it to you. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, sorry, much. Well, uh, see you tonight, then. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Colonel, I I've lost a glove. Could I have left it here? Glove? Well, now, let me see. Would that be it? Where did you get it? Well, I've had a very busy day. It could have been any one of a dozen places. Thank you. Good night. Hello, Terry Fortescue. Terry, I've got to see you right away. What's wrong, Vicky? Meet me in the usual place. All right, about uh, ten minutes. I want you to get a line on a man named Fenton. 10 Beacon Lane, NW8. Fenton? Yeah, what are you up to, March? I can give you a line on him, all right. The end of the line. He's dead. Dead? Murdered. Probably by one of those shady characters for whom he collected bad gambling debts. Couldn't interest you anymore now, I suppose, could he, Colonel? No. Nothing to interest me now, as you say. What are you dabbling in these days, March? 
Ghosts, Ames. Ghosts of the murders that you don't solve. I can't go through with it, Colonel Marsh. I can feel the presence. Oh, you'll give a splendid performance this evening, I'm sure. To go through the fraud and fakery when I know the spirit is here watching. It's most important, madam. Don't forget I've only allowed you to go this far in order to expose a far more serious crime. Good evening, Colonel. Madam, I trust you're in good spirits. So, you've decided to come after all. Just thought of a question I've got to ask Henry. Colonel March? Do you want to hear what it is? If you will be so kind, will you write your questions and place them in the brazier? Well, good evening, Mrs. Fortescue. What are you doing here? Henry didn't ask for you? Well, I'm here in a special category. Really? How? I invited Colonel March as a sympathetic presence. The spirit will rejoice, Mrs. Fortescue. I see. Very well. Thank you. Oh, madam, where shall I post it? You will now reduce your question to ashes, please. Destroy it after all that trouble? Terry, the message must lose its material substance so that Henry may claim it. I'm sorry, Mother. Give unto them beauty for ashes and the oil of joy for mourning. Miss Don, have you a question? I put no questions to the dead without first knowing which master they serve. Good evening, Mrs. Fortescue. Good evening, Lord Hibbing. How good of you to come. Terence. I'm sure you both have a word or two for Henry. Ethereal express, my lord. I sincerely think and hope that you know what you're about, Colonel. I don't. Well, I'm afraid diplomacy and criminology are much in common, my lord. In that the moment anybody knows what we're up to, why well, then the mission is a failure, so to speak. Am I expected to write a note? I'm afraid so. Unless, of course, you have any serious objections. Oh, no, no. Get to greet Henry. Shall we proceed? Will you please put out the lights? My dear friends, will you please take your places? Will you now complete the enchanted circle with your hand? I welcome you to the Enchanted Circle, as guests for my son, Henry. If we keep the spirits waiting too long. Madame Richter, if you're ready. I am ready to walk 
in the realm of darkness, guided by the light of the oil of joy. So, let us now journey together into the beyond to learn from your dear son Henry in his now great wisdom what it is he wishes his mother to do. Henry, dearest Henry, your friends are here. Henry Fortescue, from the ashes of Bellum, your friends ask guidance of your clear spirit. My spirit moves among the ashes, guided by the light of the oil of joy. Your brother Terry asks in disbelief if you have seen the divine Cleopatra. How could you know that? Your dear mother, Henry, pure in mind and spirit, asks if you can forgive the errors of her vanity. Henry, dear Henry. Victoria asks no question. If you can hear me, Henry, draw your spirit nearer, lighting your way by the oil of joy. Henry, have you heard me? Henry, are you coming among us? forgiveness in the other world. I can forgive you, but there is one I cannot forgive. Henry, forgive me. I know now it was Terry I loved. Ghosts a very bad shot. No ghost fired that gun. A very lively ghost, sir. Rod, come with me. There you are, sir. A ghost with a useful, if elementary, knowledge of photography. A, a sort of pinhole photography. You see, he used a revolver in one eye and a flashlight, and a photograph, and a lens in the other, and threw a ghostly image onto a ghostly screen of smoke. Well, I understand all that, but stop talking about ghosts. Who was it? Oh, Colonel March? We've got him. Caught him breaking out a back window. Henry. There you are, my lord. An apparition in handcuffs. All right, Ames. Thank you very much. Go on. I'm deeply sorry, Mrs. Fortescue. I wish I could have spared you this ordeal, but... But Fenton, who brought you the fake report of Henry's death, was blackmailing him. So Henry killed him. And crazed with jealousy over Victoria, he planned this ghostly murder of his own brother. 